Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you to be here today for the webinar CBD Talk, the project manager who smiled and the value of funding project by Peter Taylor, uh, the one and only speaker and author in project management. So I'm extremely excited today and uh, looking forward for this awesome uh, and exciting uh, talk. So uh, just quickly some uh, agenda for today, what's gonna happen. So we'll do a quick housekeeping as we do. Uh, we'll, I'll do a small introduction uh, based on how things are and uh, of course to Peter as well. Uh, part one will be, we'll do part one. So Peter will be talking about, you know, 20 minutes and then we will do a small poll survey. It's very important. Uh, and then we'll have some question and answers. And then Peter will do part two, 20 minutes talk again. And then we'll uh, have the final Q&A session and then I'll conclude. So this is what we're looking at. So just quickly for those of you who are new on Zoom, if you are looking at your computer mainly, um, you, are, you will find the uh, view option on top of the screen. Uh, which is in the middle of your uh, PC or laptop. If it's on iPad, you will see everything lined up on top of your iPad. Uh, audio screen on PC, that's bottom left-hand side. Uh, we, if you've, got, you've got the raise icon, so many of you now, you can use it. So if there's any problem, just raise your hand uh, and we'll confirm uh, through the raise hand. And of course, we've got the q and tab as well. Uh, you can submit your questions and comments uh, via the q and tab. So please, please, please put the Q&A tab, put the questions in as we go through. If you wanna leave the meeting, uh, not because you're bored of our presentation, but you know, just in case you've got some personal issues, then uh, leave meeting is on the right hand side of your um, screen. Um, there will be some quick poll in the end and during the presentation as well. So look, making sure we are looking to interact with you as much as we can. So um, thank you everybody. I can't thank you enough for being here today. It's been awesome. The registration has been more than 500 of you registered for today. So it's been really, you know, um, impactful if I, if I like to say so. There will be a certificate attendance. It's also one PDU for all PMI members today. Uh, it's going to be one hour plus hopefully. And please email me your, um, your name uh, if you want a certificate of attendance, your full name uh, at anil at cpdtalk.com. So who I am then, I think most of you know, uh, know me already, but I, I love construction, I love learning, I love sharing, I love people. I, I, I mean, 18 years now in the construction industry and uh, ongoing so far. And uh, I'm extremely passionate about giving back. I love it, it's my passion, and I'm extremely dedicated to give back, especially in a time where we're all you know, going through a difficult time at the moment, and especially having Peter as well saying, you know, I asked Peter, look, can you share with that, with that split second? Peter got back to me saying, Anil, I would like to do that. No problem. So I want to share a quote uh, from my lecture. I want to set the scene for project management, if you like. And uh, when I was doing my master's degree 10 years plus ago now, and my lecturer said, um, a good project manager is a dead project manager. So something, again, I'll talk to uh, Peter on that one. I can hear him laughing, but that's why he said, and I was a bit, you know, I was you know, younger at the time, and I thought, what do you mean? And he never said, look, you'll understand one day what I mean by a good project manager is a dead project manager. So I wanted to share a blog with you, which I read again 10 years ago, and it was the project manager, a hero of our time. This blog was written by Tony Bingham, is a barrister and arbitrator at Free Paper Building Temple in October 2010, and he's still very active. And what he said was, Nowadays, the project manager has grown up in arms and legs and wings and things. They seem to be everywhere. Some say they are coordinator and guardians of the client interests. Some say they should go to hell. Some say they represent all that is wrong with the building process. And I say they are vital. So this is a blog of more than you know, 500 words. And you can see there the picture there where the project manager has been making tea for the contractor. So this is where we are. I'm sure you can relate to some of those uh, pictures there as we've got, got it there. And he also goes on to say that the project manager is a crack filler, sometimes a gap filler, even a canyon filler. He's the one who saved the procurement process from disaster. So if you want to have a read from that, I'm going to definitely ping this blog over to you. And I want to, I read Peter's book a long time ago, but I wanted to refresh myself for the past few weeks on the project manager who smiles. So Peter's got a book. Uh, hopefully he'll share a copy with us all today, uh, which I will issue to you through email. So this was a, um, a story of the project manager and a hot air balloon. 
I, I love the quotes and I wanted to share that with you. So a man in a hot air balloon was lost. He reduced altitude and spotted another woman below. He descended a little bit more and shouted, excuse me, madam, can you help me please? I promised my friend I would meet him an hour ago, but I don't know where I am. So the lady said, yeah, the woman replied, you're in the hot air balloon hovering approximately 30 feet above Alkali Desert, its scrub habitat, 2.7 miles west of the Colorado River, near one of the remnant population and spawning ground of the Razorback Sucker. So the project manager says, or the balloonist says, you must be a biologist, said the balloonist. I am, replied the woman. How did you know? Well, answered the balloonist, everything you told me is technically correct, but I have no idea what to make of your information. And the fact is, I'm still lost. Frankly, you have not been much help so far. The woman below replied, you must be a project manager, right? I am, replied the balloonist, but how did you know that? Well, said the woman, you don't know where you are and where you're going. You have risen to where you are today due to a large quantity of hot air. You made a promise to someone that you have no idea how to keep and you expect me to solve your problem. The fact is, you are in exactly the same position you were in before we meet, but somehow it is now my fault. Come on. So I think this is a, a really good one. I love that one when I read it and I wanted to share that with you. Um, so uh, there's a lot of colleagues here today, um, you know, listening to us um, based on PMI, um, you know, PMI shared the invite. It, it is a PMI event in a way, but technically not from PMI because uh, I love the PMI team. So I wanted to give a tribute. I wanted to share with Peter as well what we did and what uh, the PMI team did, not me did, but uh, under the leadership of Arun Politigadu. And PMI chapter started in 2018. And now, you know, there was a groundbreaking conference, which I believe was the best in the world. So let me share that with you. Uh, just making sure we've got the sound and everything else with that. Yeah. And uh, off we go. This is technically a tribute to the PMI team in Mauritius, which I loved. So here we go. Stay with us.
So this was a PMI tribute to all PMI members. I think everyone deserves a big round of applause on this one. Put, put, put your hands up, please, for the PMI team of Mauritius. And I think today we've got Peter as well, who's a massive ambassador for PMI. Great picture there with all the PMI team. So thank you, everybody. And I'm sure many of you are watching. We still get goose, goosebumps from watching this video. It's awesome. So this was a picture, uh, an email which I issued to Peter five years ago on the 1st of Feb 2015. And I wanted Peter to talk to, uh, I've been following Peter for a long time. And I said, I'm a big fan of yours. Can we Skype and let's talk? It never happened. And, you know, uh, COVID-19 was a, a blessing in disguise for, for getting Peter here today. So I think I'll cherish that for, for the rest of my life, actually. Uh, so I want to do a quick survey before we introduce Peter. So let me just uh, um, share this uh, first one with you uh, before we really set the tone as we get into this um, impactful presentation. So the Peter and uh, my colleague Davson can vote as well. So here we go. So if you can just uh, please, please, please put your vote in. Do you think project managers should have a sense of humor? So we've got almost 300 of you here today. Do you think project managers should have a sense of humor? Please, please, please put your vote in because we've always been in an environment where, you know, we don't want to be in meetings or we want meetings to be more fun. So please, do you think project managers should have a sense of humor? And we've got the guru today of the project managers to smile. So love to have Peter's views on that. So 81% of you have voted. Please, please, please put your vote in. Uh, almost 83. So again, do you think project managers should have a sense of humor or even a manager should have a sense of humor 85 percent of you have voted and i'm just going to end polling and share the result with everybody so the result is here a whopping 98 percent uh, or 97 percent have said yes we would like project manager to have a sense of humor and there's about two to three pessimistic uh, of you who are thinking like okay no we don't think uh, project managers should have a sense of humor and I will find out after that when Peter, um, and I'll take the views of Peter. So I'm just gonna stop result on this one and then just uh, formally introduce the presenter. So Peter Taylor, um, again, love you to be here. Can't thank you enough. Uh, Peter is an experience change and transformation specialist who has operated at global scale with many industries for organization ranging from small to enterprise. Peter is the author of number one best-selling project management book the lazy project manager alongside with many other book of project management he also produced uh, um, the, the project manager who smiled i love that book and we were going to share that with you he also talked about pmo development for most of you pmo is not prime minister's office it's project management office because someone asked me is pmo prime minister's office it's not it's project management office development executive sponsorship transformation leadership speaking skill Peter has delivered over 380 lectures around the world in over 25 countries and has been described as perhaps the most entertaining and inspiring speakers in the project manager world. Uh, he's got two nice websites as well, www.thelazyprojectmanager.com and also the awesome www.pmtribe.com where we also have Colin who came last year as well. So uh, over to Peter. I'm just going to stop sharing now, Peter. And um, if you can just uh, set up your presentation as we go along. And we've got yeah. Peter here. Everybody, again, we can't thank Peter enough as Peter's setting up. Can you all put your hands up, please, for um, Peter here, right from Mauritius, uh, giving us all the presentation uh, that's going to. So thank you, thank you, everybody, for putting your hands up. Uh, hugely appreciated. Uh, thank you. So let's get Peter sorted out with the logistic and as we transform. So Peter will okay. do part one and then we'll do survey. Peter, all yours. I can't see your Good. screen, Peter. Good, you can see my screen. That's the important thing and you can hear No, we, we can't voice. see your screen. We can't see your screen. You can't see your screen, okay. No, um, I need to share, okay then, yeah. bear with me. So share screen. I thought it was already shared, so there we go. Yeah. We good? Yeah, perfect. Okay. Now you can see me, now you can hear me, now you can see my slides. Awesome. Thank you very much. All right, fine. Thanks. Thanks for the introduction. I appreciate it. And uh, yes, five, five years. It's been worth waiting, I'm sure. <laughs> Don't make it five years after this, though. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I guess my task is, uh, is, to, is, you know, if you can do that poll at the end, you know, can we get to 100% of people believe uh, project manager should uh, have, have a sense of humor? But yeah, so thanks for this. Thanks for the, thanks for the introduction. It is all based around uh, the book, The Project Manager Who Smiled, 
and uh, the book was written some time ago. And it kind of came about in the, well, it kind of resurgence of it came about in the recent uh, situation we're all in, the crisis of the world, the uh, COVID-19 situation. And I was kind of thinking about what, what can I do to uh, help people during this period of time? And my immediate thought, actually, because I've been working remotely for years, um, you know, my, 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 my roles have been a mixture of either running and building PMOs for organizations, project management offices. Um, I, I've developed, developed five major PMOs at a global level, you know, billion, uh, billion dollar plus companies, thousands of projects, hundreds of project managers. Uh, but in between that, I've continually uh, enjoyed the ability to write and to travel and to speak. So my first thoughts in this situation was, well, Peter, you can, you can connect to people and share some of your ideas around uh, remote working, uh, virtual uh, existence. But suddenly on LinkedIn, where I, you know, I, I play a lot on LinkedIn, everybody was an expert on, on this already, it seems. So I thought, well, that's no fun. So, but what is fun is my book. Well, why don't I share my book and you know, bring, bring a few smiles to people? I, and what happened next to just astonish me, because this, uh, this book, I, I put it up on LinkedIn. Uh, and I said, well, anybody's interested in a free copy, you know, get, get contact me. And that LinkedIn posting, last time I checked, had over 30,000 views. Wow. And I have given away thousands of copies of books as a result of that. And then I thought, well, okay, that's, that, that was fun, but what do we, why don't I start talking about it as well? So I put together this, this webinar that you're, you're experiencing today, and I started to, to offer it out around the world to uh, quite a lot of PMI chapters, <clears throat> and also to uh, private companies. And again, it's just proved very, very popular. It's incredible. And so I'm delighted to be here today. Uh, as I said, I, I'm, you know, Mauritius is on, is on my list of places to go to in the world. Uh, that and Iceland uh, are yeah, top of my list right now. Um, but I have been fortunate enough. I've been to lots of places. But the world's changed. This, this I saw uh, yesterday, and this just summarizes how the world has changed. And the previous video was talking about we won't be on planes anytime soon, which is very sad because uh, I would love to continue to travel like I used to. But, um, you know, we're using Zoom, and Zoom is now worth more in market capitalization than the top seven airlines in the world put together. Now, there are many ways you can say life has changed, but that is just an astounding one right there and then. And, uh, yeah, lucky old, uh, I guess, shareholders of Zoom, that's, that's something. But the world has changed, and so we need to think about it. But the world is also the same in many ways, in the sense we still have to connect, we still have to communicate, we still have to engage, we still have to encourage, we still have to support, and that's part of what we do as project managers. Now, I had another initiative, uh, which I also ran on LinkedIn, and I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm blatantly sharing this for, for promotional purposes. Um, I make no money out of this one at all. This is going to go to a charity, any proceeds from this book. And what I said was, well, how quickly, someone asked me actually, how quickly can you write a book, Peter? And it's like, well, when I write it, I write very quickly. But then I thought, well, how quickly can you produce a book? And with Amazon these days and the KDB, KDP uh, functionality service they have, self-publishing is very simple, and I've done it before. So I reached out on LinkedIn. I said, right, we have 21 days to, from now to write and publish a book. And the result is this book. It's called The Projectless Manager, Inspirational Thoughts from the World of Project Managers. I had 56 contributors in the end. Um, more people showed interest. Life takes over, not everybody could do it. Uh, not every contribution made it, made the grade. But in the book, there are 56 contributors um, who have uh, contributed um, 500 words around that. Uh, from, they're from 20 countries in total. We did it in 21 days. And it includes, uh, broadly speaking, it includes a lockdown genius, brilliant ideas to survive in the current situation of lockdown. Legacy inspiration, brilliant ideas to how life will change and you can deal with the future um, from this point forward. And then there were some wild cards. You could, there are certain ideas and thoughts people have you just can't categorize, so there was a wild card. If you're wondering about the cover, well, I reached out and I said, well, you know, let's, let's get the children. They're, they're sitting at home, you know, driving parents crazy. Um, so let's get them to design a cover. And then I had a, a, some great submissions from some children around the world. And this was the winner. I, I love this one. The kind of superhero. I love the superhero. I love that it's a lady. I love the colours. It just seemed to fit. So that's why the uh, the book looks like that. Why did the project manager cross the road? To get to the critical path, of course. Groans from the audience, no doubt. Terrible joke. 
Um, as been described in the introduction, I am the lazy project manager. This is kind of what I do. I, I speak, I keynote, I webinars, I lecture, I train, I do workshops, I do consultancy and coaching. <clears throat> and sometimes I have a real job and I help build PMOs and uh, transformation offices around the world. I'm the lazy project manager because that's the name of the book that came out all those years ago. But today I hope to be the lazy, funny project manager, or at least slightly funny. That's my plan. And this, this wonderful quote that I, I love to use because it's a great quote, I have to point out this was not a quote that came from my mother. Um, it's the sort of thing my mother probably would say if she actually saw me speak. But it isn't, it came from a, a post-conference survey in Australia. The, uh, the sad thing is I don't know who said it uh, because it was a blind survey. There was uh, no way to find out who it was. Uh, and I have to point out that picture is not a picture of my mother either. I did used to use a picture of my mother, but uh, she told me off and decided she didn't want that. So I stole a mother from the internet. But it is what I love doing. Now, when the book came out, the project manager who smiled, uh, uh, it was supported by a guy called Andrew Filev, who's the founder of Reich. Now, Reich is one of the many technologies available to project managers. I'm not promoting this one particularly, but they did sponsor the book to make it happen. And, did, and Andrew did write uh, one of the forwards. And what Andrew said there is, is I just totally believe. <clears throat> he said, look, at work, a good laugh not only reduces tension and relieves stress, but it also helps to increase team bonding and boost morale. Totally. I totally believe that. Definitely reduces the tension, and I will share a story about that. It relieves stress. I'll share a story about that. It increases team bonding. I'll share a story about that. And I do totally believe it boosts morale in the team if there's a great spirit. Um, doesn't mean you are crazy and manically smiling and laughing and wearing clown costumes constantly. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a sense of purpose that is driven by a sense of joint uh, <coughs> achievement, uh, you know, team spirit, and the fact that you have a smile and a laugh at appropriate times. The other person who wrote the forward is this guy, Alexander Kerov, uh, who runs Woohoo Inc., which I think is one of the greatest names of a company I've ever come across. Alexander, I saw speak just as I was putting the book together. And he presents on, uh, on happiness. And he says this, this is not soft, idealistic, naive, hippie thinking. No, it's not. It is very hard, practical thoughts of value adding to a project team, to team bonding, team experience, team performance. This is not a nice to have fluffy, vague thing at all. It is hard, it is at the center of great, Team performance. Now, as an example, let me show you this. This is um, this is Dr. Zeus. Hopefully, you've all come across Dr. Zeus. Now, Zeus is a bit of a genius, I think, because many many years ago, um, what Zeus saw was the in America the, the primers, the books they have to learn to read. Zeus thought that they were insanely boring, utterly boring. They had all the right words that children should have to learn at that age. So the primers were perfect from that point of view, but the actual contents, the actual stories were dis, you know, disinteresting to most children. They were dull and therefore children weren't drawn towards actually engaging with the books themselves. And Zeus came up with the, the cat in a hat, which is colorful, which is crazy, which is wacky, which is weird, which is engaging, which is interesting. And as a result, children, was, children wanted to read them. They were drawn into them. And by being drawn into them, they actually naturally began to learn without realizing they were learned. It was about the characters, about the colors, about the stories. And so this was a significant step forward in children uh, learning to read. So I think this concept is, is you know, prevalent wherever. Here's I think another example. This is a, another book I have, The Lazy Project Manager and the Project from Hell. Now, the Project for Hell is a workshop that I've been running for quite some time, um, and it's always popular. It's popular because it has gamification built into it. The premise of the workshop is, is, is simple. It's all about what makes projects difficult and challenging. That's the heart of it. But what we do is there's a project that has failed, and this is a real project that I was involved in. I would say I was involved in trying to rescue. It wasn't my fault it went wrong in the first place. Uh, I didn't create the Project from Hell. I tried to create the Project from Heaven which was very difficult. But at the heart of this, I thought, well, there's a case study here. There's, there's something at the heart of this, this issue, this problem, that's gonna be valuable to other people. And so I developed this workshop from it. 
And the fun the, part of it is, you know, you put people into teams. This could be run uh, physically or, or virtually. You put people into teams and you get them to go come up with a great team name. And then you set them a challenge. They're given the timeline of the project from hell from start to finish, what went wrong and the final outcome. And then, then you're given the one thing, the one thing that every project manager would love to have, a time machine. They can use the time machine once. They can go back into time. They can make changes. And that's the whole point. Cause and effect. What would they do to make changes and what consequences would that have on the project? And then they have to produce a presentation. The presentations have been so much fun over the years. I don't tell people how they present back. They could, you know, I've had PowerPoint. I've had Prezi. I've had flip chart. I've had post-it notes. I've had uh, people present it back as a fairy tale. I've had people role play. It's really fun to see the creativity of people but the heart of it is, is what differences would you have made and what changes would have you know resulted into hopefully a project from heaven people love it it's a brilliant exercise for team bonding team connecting team evaluation it's a great activity for project kickoffs it's a great activity in fact i'm running it for a couple of companies right now to reconnect their project managers in this virtual world uh, but people love it because it is, it's gamified. It gamified. It, the heart of it is fun, and people do not realise that they are learning as a result of it. Now, the shortest distance between two people is laughter, said Victor Borge, and I, and I believe that. You know, you guys are all over the place. I'm currently in the UK, uh, somewhere 40 miles west of London. I uh, I'm trying to connect with you through this webinar, but if I can make you laugh, I am so close to you so close to you so even if, even if i get a smile out of you and there will trust me there will be some terrible jokes later later on but the point is if i if you connect to someone in this way you are so close to them for that period of time and dark humor these are these are you know difficult times let's, let's recognize that but dark humor is is you know it's very powerful as well so i one of my last presentations i did was for in budapest for pmi actually at their conference I was a keynote speaker there and I, I did a presentation actually on uh, Project Fun. And in fact, I got uh, 400 project managers all wearing red noses and waving and smiling at me. There's a great photo on my website of that. On the way back, I'm on the plane, I'm on a British Airways plane. And we all, you know, we all used to fly, I'm sure, we're all used to it. And you know, if you travel regularly, you, you kind of know roughly what's going to go on, you, you know what announcements are likely to happen. Well, suddenly the announcement came out that was very different. I'd never heard it. It was all cabin crew to report to the flight deck immediately. Wow, what's that? I've not heard that before. Everybody's head actually was looking up and that, that's different. Yeah. <clears throat> a few minutes later, the announcement came from the flight deck from the captain who said, we have a report of a leakage of some form. And as a result of that, I have confirmed with Heathrow Airport that we are uh, adopting an emergency landing protocol. Wow. I haven't experienced that before either. But very quickly, dark humour came in to, to lighten the mood. Now, you can see those two, do uh, two doors over the wing. I love to sit on one of those seats because you get a little bit more room, a little bit more leg room. That's the only reason I sit there. And my fellow traveller who was sitting by the window made the comment of, hey, I used to sit here for extra leg room. Yeah, I agree. That's not that safe for me. He goes, now, now I'm quite glad I'm sitting here. This could be, this could be important. Um, dark humour. As we came into Heathrow, if you've ever flown into Heathrow, you'll know this. Um, there's a famous thing called the famous uh, the Heathrow stack. <laughs> this is where all the planes get in a giant column and they basically descend from the height of the column and they go all the way down, all over, go round and round, and eventually they're allowed to land into Heathrow. It's a way of controlling the traffic flow into Heathrow um, because it gets very busy. Well, suddenly we are in immediate descent into Heathrow and another person joked at that point, well, this is one hell of a way to bypass the Heathrow stack. It was. We landed. Obviously, I'm still here. Uh, we were checked over. We were taken to a safe area, checked over externally. People came on board, uh, checked internally. We were allowed to disembark, sent to a holding area, given a, a very quick medical, and we went on our way. I do not know what the problem was. But my point is that dark humour came about very quickly to basically ease the situation. My I think is, uh, you know, the one, what is responsible for the acceleration of digital transformation? The CIO, the CTO, the CFO, or COVID-19? 
answer, COVID-19. We're all doing stuff like this that we probably wouldn't have done before. This is another one that made me smile, remote learning, because remote le learning has become very, very important right now. We can't stop learning, we shouldn't stop learning, but remote learning, have a look at this one. So you, need, can, you can even become a Jedi uh, through remote learning, <laughs> as long as you can find the right place on the student portal. Awesome. Yeah, have fun, success will follow. If you're having fun, you're doing it wrong, said Richard Banson. I'm not convinced Richard's having a lot of fun at the moment. His airline is in serious trouble. Um, he's doing an awful lot to try and raise significant funds. We're talking like half a billion at the moment. But his principle was that. It was have fun, success will follow. And if you aren't having fun, you are doing something wrong. So I see there is no issue with having fun. No issue with enjoying yourself whilst you deliver the goods, whilst you are being professional. And I don't think professional and having fun are, need to be separate. They need to be appropriate. And I will say this many times, whatever you do has to be appropriate, suitable. It has to be the right situation with the right yeah. people in the right way. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, here's some wisdom of fun. This is a, a character, Jeff Dunham is a very funny ventriloquist, I think. Uh, this is a character he has called Walter. Walter is miserable, utterly, utterly miserable. That's what makes him funny. But the point is, it actually takes less muscles to, to look happy than it does to look miserable. So you put more effort into being miserable. So why would you do that? I'm a lazy project manager. And I think I like you should do things the easiest way possible, as long as they're productive. So why look miserable? Secondly, if you have a positive attitude, it gives you the bounce back factor. You know, it, it, let's be honest, we, we're projects, there are going to be problems. There are going to be difficulties. There are going to be challenges. So on that basis, to be able to do recover quickly, to bounce back, is really important and it helps work better with your teammates with your project colleagues your your workmates um, it's interesting that happy people help other people more if you're a happy positive person you help other people more and if you're a happy person you help other happy people even more than that so there's a strong argument to have as many positive and happy people in your project team as possible because it, all of this makes you popular it makes you infectious to others in a good way yeah infectious in a good way let's be clear about that it allows you to connect it allows you to support each other it allows you to overcome issues and overcome challenges it is just a good place to be and this is an interesting piece of research as if research is done over a long period of time so this this research what it did it went and found um a whole bunch of novices now these are these are people who have yet to become nuns they haven't taken their final vows but these novices, um, they were asked to write a short biographical statement, how they felt about themselves, how they felt about the world. And many years later, the researchers went back and at the age of 85, wow. what they found was that of the nuns who had a positive, enthusiastic view of the world and of their own life, 90% of them were still alive. Wow. Of the ones who had a less positive or slightly negative biographical sort of a more downbeat view of life 58 percent of those are still alive and there's other pieces of research but they all kind of point to the fact that happy people actually live longer and, and you know it's, it's it's positive in so so many ways awesome uh, and this brings us to a poll and i think uh, neil it's back over to you yeah, thanks. Uh, thank you very much, Peter. I think I've loved this uh, 20 minutes and looking for more. So uh, hi, but just to make it more interactive and then we can connect with you, we're going to do a poll survey. And um, the poll survey is on, I'm just going to launch that. And uh, there was some percentage error earlier regarding 90, 98% plus 3%. So I'm not too sure what Zoom did there. So I apologize. Uh, I'm just going to launch the poll now. And uh, here we go. So how important do you think it is to smile as a project manager? How important do you think it is to smile as a project manager out of five, one being not important and five is extremely important. So you got one, two, three, four, five. How important do you think it is? Um, it is really you know, important to smile as a project manager. Do we need to bring in smile every time we, 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 we work with colleagues, we have meetings, of course we're stressed. Uh, but how important is it? So I can also see uh, Peter's uh, putting his England hat on 
And uh, yeah, so 75% of you have voted right now. So could you please, please, please put your vote in? Um, and uh, please, uh, how important do you think it is uh, important to smile, is to, to, to you know, be positive? I think Peter just mentioned about the nuns as well. And, uh, you know, uh, happy people, positive people live longer. So 80% of you have voted. So I'm just going to end polling now. Let's see if the figures tally up. Uh, fingers crossed on that one. And I'm going to share the result with you, Peter. So, Peter, the results are, uh, so 0% uh, says not important. 1% say okay. 11% says average. 30% say, yeah, it is important. A whopping 58% says yes very very important so what's your views on that peter yeah absolutely i think we're getting there and it comes down to it you know do i do you you know are there times you should smile are there times you should have a positive yes of course there are there are other times when you have to look seriously you know serious situations uh you know nobody actually would respect a project manager walk around you know like a like a deranged crazy yeah i'm happy all the time that's never going to work is it and that's not good so it is appropriate. It's never all the time, but no, I like that. That's good. We're getting there. We're getting okay. There. So Peter, I want to take a few questions because there has been some question coming in. Sure. Uh, there's an anonymous uh, attendee. Uh, someone, sometime we get really cranky. Keep we, sorry. Sometime we get really creepy key, key project stakeholders with no sense of humor and who can potentially lower the morale in the project team. How do you manage this difficult, grumpy stakeholders <laughs> well i mean if that, you know people are what they are um you know this i don't know if you can find out why that's always a great idea so if you know if, if this is a let's, let's just take an example let's say it's your you know your project sponsor is miserable well if that's the case why you know and, and talk to other project managers and may have worked with them or anybody if you've got someone who's grumpy who's got some experience in the past have they always been like this or is just something really upsetting them right now? If there's something upsetting them right now, then can you help in some way? Can you at least be considerate of that? If they are one of one of life's grumpy people, that's what they are. You, know, you just don't accept them at face value, and you know, in general terms, don't waste your your smiley fun face with them because it's kind of pointless. Um, but you know, if they're in a power, if they're a position of, of influence, then you you have to engage with them in the way they'd like you to engage with them. Um, the other thing I say to people is that you know. If you're uncertain about fun in a situation, then, then be very subtle about it. So a good example is that don't, you know, and again, I'm gonna use the project sponsor. It's not that all project sponsors are miserable, but this is an example. Your project sponsor is a very serious person, senior in the organization. Uh, you're not quite sure what their sense of humor is. But most people have a sense of humor, let's be face it. <clears throat> but in work, they're very serious. Well, don't go into their office and start cracking jokes. It's not gonna work. But what you can do is you can go and say, hey, this just happened on the project and the result is really, really positive. You know, find an example. And if behind that is, you never guess what, this, this happened because this, this joke happened or this humorous thing happened or we had this, this off-site experience and, and two people connected who hadn't connected. Find something like that because what you're doing is sharing fun, but not in a direct manner. You're not joking with the people. What you're doing is saying, look, this is the value of fun because this happened on the project and it was positive. Yeah, that's just a couple of ideas. Okay, uh, we've also got John McCarty, who is now based in Mauritius. Earlier, he said he's got a spare room, so he can't wait to see you in Mauritius. And he also, <laughs> he also said, Peter, can you get me a job as a happy nun project manager? So John, <laughs> thank you for kicking this off. Uh, on a serious note, we've got a question from Zoya. How do you deal when you feel like you're underperforming? Or are you, are, are you feeling overwhelmed when managing a project? So how do you feel, how do you deal with, with underperformance? Thanks, Zoya. Yeah, well, I think this, personally, I think this leads back to um, an area I've already talked about, which is that if you can, if you've built a great team spirit, the team can lift you. You know, if you're struggling, if you just, if things aren't going right, or you're having some personal issues, or it's just a, one of those tough days or weeks, if you have a team around you that, 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 that is close and understands you, then they can lift you, they can support you. They just, you know, project managers really, I mean, don't isolate yourselves. I mean, you know, you're part of the team. It doesn't mean you, you get into the detail. That's always a problem as well. But, you know, the team can help. And secondly, you know, use your senior 
stakeholders as well. Again, you know, sponsors, if, you, if you're having a tough time, use your sponsor. Again, it's all about building those right relationships at the beginning of the project so that you can lean on them when needed or equally be available to lean on uh, to support other people. Um, and then, you know, going back to that, you know, not smiling all the time, but you know, I worked with a project manager and their approach was every, every morning they'd spend, if they could, the first hour just going around and talking to people, you know, smiling, saying hi, how's things going, you know, talk about sport when we used to have sport, they talk about, uh, you know, holidays and family. They, they totally saw the importance of the human connection. And then they might straight after that go into one of the most toughest steering meetings or difficult uh, supplier conversations or whatever. But that was his, that was his road. He would, he would always try and do that on a daily basis. And he believed, he totally believed in it. It would, it would pay dividends later on when he needed it. Okay, awesome. I've got a question from my boss. Uh, one of the you know, coolest boss uh, I've, I've been across. So this is my <laughs> boss. This is serious uh, from my boss, uh, Santush. Is being positive not an alternative to smiling in serious situation? Is being positive not an alternative to smiling in serious situation? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's, you know, I think, yeah, I mean, the, the two are the two are aligned, but and they're also separate. You know, you can be positive without smiling. You can be uh, happy without smiling as well. It's, it's you know, all these things are possible. Possible. I think yes. You know, as a project manager, one of the greatest strengths is, is your people skills, and the second one is your positive attitude. Your this can be done. This you know, we will overcome whatever difficulties we are facing. And I just think you know, the smile is a way of projecting that. And I'll talk about that in, in just a minute. The, the value of that is a great segue into the next part because you know we need indications from people. You know, and even if I'm feeling really upbeat um, today, if I'm having a great day and I'm enjoying the presentation, if I'm just sitting here with a really miserable face, and just, <laughs> you, don't, you don't feel it. You don't feel yeah. it. So sometimes we need those, those visual symbol, sing, signals. A great question. I'll take a few more questions. Uh, I'm, I'm, there's a really nice question coming in. We've got a question from Professor Kiran. Would it be unethical, would it be unethical to get rid of a project team member who's not pulling his weight. Would your answer be different in the COVID-19 situation? So it's slightly off the smile, um, but <laughs> yeah, more no, about yeah. Uh, well, the bottom line is I've got rid of people from project teams, yes. I, yeah. I don't think it's unethical. Um, I, I think you have a responsibility to understand why, you have a responsibility to support them. You know, you cannot dismiss someone just because you don't like them or they haven't, they didn't smile in the first meeting or they didn't deliver the very first thing that you expected of them. But I mean, if you've seen uh, consistent and repeatable behavior this way, I think you have a right to um, do what you need to do to remove someone from the project team because they, they can drag the team down. So yeah. I, I don't think it's unethical at all. I think, you know, but I do think you also have a responsibility to try and turn it around. Um, and this, I, I always go back to, in the middle of the project, you know, your job as a project manager is to be proactive and reactive, not to be in the detail, not to be you know, technically involved, etc. So you've got the bandwidth to deal with the people situations. Yeah, I've got a common question. Uh, this will be the pen, uh, one more question, uh, two more questions before we, we move on to your okay. presentation. Peter, so this question from Sarit, Sarita, and there's a common question coming in. Don't you think having too much of a sense of humor can risk the credibility of the PM in front of the stakeholders in the sense of being taken for granted and a joker and therefore risk the prompt deliverable. Don't you think that it should be balanced? Yes, I do. Of course I do. I think, you know, you're not going to be crazy manic all the time. You're not going to be smiling all the time. You're not going to be the joke. You don't, you don't want to be seen as a joker. You want to be seen as someone who leads a good project team with a great team spirit. And there are times to be serious and times to, to have a laugh. And you need to understand when and how you, you do that, and who you do that with. Um, and you want to come across as someone who is confident, who's, who's leading well, has a great team, who's likely to deliver. And, you know, at times has, you know, has a smile on their face and is willing to, to come and chat with you. I think, yes, I mean, you can take it too far and everything needs to be appropriate and suitable. Uh, a great question. So we'll take uh, one more. Uh, Jensen. I do believe it is hard to be positive nowadays when negativity and stress seem to be trendy. How far do you agree? Stress is trendy, really? I hope not. 
That would be very sad. I don't know. I mean, so how can I answer this one? Well, let me give you an example. I mean, the origins of the Lazy Project Manager, one of the origins was uh, I was running a PMO. I had just over 100 project managers around the Europe, and I was looking at their work behaviors, their patterns of, of, of uh, hours of working and their successes. And what was really interesting was half of them were being reasonably successful. We weren't perfect, of course, but being reasonably successful. And on, on average, they were doing 40 hour weeks. On average, projects go up and down. We know that. But on average, they were doing a typical working week. The other half were putting crazy, for me, they were putting in crazy hours, 70, 80 hours a week regularly. And interestingly, they were being no more successful than the, other, the first group. So there was a behavioral difference that really kind of led me to, to put together the concept of the lazy project manager. And it was by understanding where they were, in my view, wasting their time and their efforts uh, and being able to you know, do some re-education, some retraining in those areas to support them with some tools and yeah. processes to simplify their life. Yeah. And, and really to teach them to, to, to really trust and work with their project teams was probably the biggest one that suddenly we began to see a change in that, that behavior. So I think, you know, I don't know if that's a good answer, but that's, that's kind of the best I got. I've got one more question before we move to your presentation. And this one is really a good one. I didn't expect that one. Um, this is coming from TT Park. Uh, what would you advise a female project manager who does not want to be misconstrued as being flirtous when smiling? Oh gosh, that's a, that's a, that's a good question. Yeah, I but I think you know they're smiling. They're smiling. Um, you know, I smile and I don't think it's flirtatious. I think I think a lady can smile in a similar sort of way and, and not be flirtatious. Um, I think supported by her professionalism and her standing, um, you know, the way she behaves on the project, how she sets a standard, that it's not all fun and lightweight. It can be serious at times and not to be afraid to call out. Uh, team members when they you know you think there are issues etc i think if you put that package together then i think and i would hope you've got the right situation certainly i mean I, some of the best project managers i know are females i mean uh, um around the world and I, you know they can certainly do it and i i believe they mix that that inherent humanity that uh, the ladies have perhaps over the males that this is they are typically more people per people than we are as males I think as long as that is well balanced uh, with their behavior and everything else, then, then I don't think there'd be a problem. Uh, I'd hope there wouldn't be a problem, certainly. I certainly love it. I mean, I, you know, when, I, when I, read, I read the PMO inside Siemens, I was very disappointed that there were 160 male and one female project manager when I started. Um, most PMOs I've run since then have had a, as close to a 50-50 mix as possible um, because, you know, Gender has nothing to do particularly with successful project managers in many, many ways. Wow, awesome. Uh, just one more question before we move on. Uh, this is a common question as well, Peter. What should be the leadership style of a project manager who has got a sense of humor from Rahul? Rahul. What is your leadership style? I mean, yeah. I, oh, that's, I, mean you, I think as far as leaders is concerned, you are what you are and you have a different style. I think... You know, my, I advocate, you know, that a leader is someone who's constantly thinking ahead, constantly looking at the, um, the balance between what needs to be done and, and what is effective as far as effort in, into it. Uh, I apply the 80-20 rule a lot. And, and I use fun. I kind of, I do. I, I, I subconsciously use fun a lot because that's just my nature. And I, but I consciously use fun uh, in other situations where I'm, I'm creating team building experiences and stuff like that. Uh, I don't, again, I'm not sure if that directly answers the question, but I think you're leading, you, know, you roll this into your leadership style that is natural to yourself. Awesome. Peter, thank you very much indeed. Part two, all yours. Thank you very much okay. for this awesome session. All right. Okay. Let's move on. So, We talked about smiling a lot, and this is interesting. So this is um, a Swedish survey in 2002. Uh, they presented back uh, what is effectively a universal truth. And the way that you do this is, if you can imagine you're, you know, you're in a group and you, get, you try and get people in pairs. I know this, you know this is the old way of face to face, but you can do this virtually. And you have a person A and a person B. And what you do is you get person A, you get them to smile at person B and person B, if you monitor them, they will typically respond in kind. They will typically smile 
in response. A smile engenders another smile. It's called facial response mechanism. And equally, if you get to person A to look miserable, then person B will typically stop smiling and, and probably emulate the, the slightly sad looking expression that they're seeing. Again, facial response mechanism. When we see happy people, we, we generally respond in a positive way. We see negative people, we respond in a negative uh, down way. Um, the good fun is, of course, is you can then have, uh, have a laugh with people and then you, know, you get person A to smile crazily and, and person B has to try and look miserable or vice versa. And then you get a lot of laughs in an audience because they, you know, people really struggle to do that. So, you know, like we like really. <clears throat> Now, I did warn there'll be some really bad jokes, and they're coming up now. This is my grown on an uh, um, Again, I can't hear the people groaning, but I, I'm, I'm, I can hear it in my head. Yeah. The nicest thing about not planning is that failure comes as a complete surprise and is not preceded by a period of worry <laughs> and depression. <clears throat> a big groan for that one. It always, it always gets the loudest groan because everybody's heard that one. A risk is something nasty you smell, and an issue is something nasty you stand in. You know what I'm talking about here. Um, I think it's a good analogy. It's a good way of representing the difference between a risk and an issue. Uh, and that usually brings some smiles to people's faces. It takes one woman and nine months to have a baby. It cannot be done in one month by impregnating nine women. There's no way you can crash that schedule. It takes what it takes. And uh, that's usually a you know, good laugh as well. Any project can be estimated accurately once it's completed. Um, I'm not even sure that's true. I have worked on project reviews, retrospectives, and I've worked on project recovery. And it's amazing the number of times that you can't even find out how much effort has been put into a project, how much resource, how much money. It's just a mess of, rec of records behind all of this. So <clears throat> questionable whether that's really true. Nothing is impossible for the person who doesn't have to do it. Laugh. Change is inevitable except from a vending machine. I used to love this one, but of course, these days, more and more, vending machines accept credit cards and uh, paying by your phone and stuff like that. So this, this joke will die at an age. It'll be one that our, our children probably will never understand, but I'm sure we get it. If you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. Well, it'll take you somewhere. It may not take you where you wanted to go to, but it will definitely take you somewhere. And some stories. So, um, as project managers, I hope you know that there is a day <clears throat> that is um, that is your day. And it's called International Project Management Day. It's on the first Thursday in November. It's a day of celebration. It was started by a friend of mine, Frank Salardis, and uh, it's a day of celebration. But it's not the most important day of the year. The most important day of the year is Speak Like a Pirate Day. Yes, it is. Now, Speak Like a Pirate Day is in September. <clears throat> and um, I discovered this quite a few years ago. And it coincided with me running a, a project management office with lots of people in different countries. And our difficulties, we could never get everybody together. The company would never you know, pay for everybody to come together into kind of a conference or a summit or anything like that. So, you know, I, I met most of the project managers, um, but we would need something to connect them. And this, I came across this Speak Like a Pirate Day. And you can find it online. I think the website is Talk Like a Pirate. Um, but this is a day where I, the first year I got my core team together and we said, this is fun, let's do it. And what we, we did, we spoke like a pirate. We were like Johnny Depp in Pirates of the Caribbean, lots of yars and having fun. And we, uh, we enjoyed all of that. And I said, well, next year we're gonna do it bigger. We're gonna involve all the project managers across Europe. So that year I sent everybody an eye patch and an inflatable parrot. And we celebrated Speak Like a Pirate Day. Now there are pirate translators you can get online. Uh, multiple languages these days um, and at that point there was um, a lot of German uh, project managers in my team uh, and there was a German pirate translator which is quite scary I mean, German language is quite scary anyway you imagine turning that into pirate speak well we were doing real work and there was emails going around that had been translated and forwarded on and etc and then there was this one big tip here is the uh, <clears throat> one of the German project managers were so deep in this conversation this project challenge that he forwarded the email onto his manager who had no idea what was going on and wanted to know what the hell was going on when he got this email in pirate speak. So make sure everyone's involved in the joke. That's the first tip. The second tip is that we, uh, to connect, you know, again, it comes back to this humor can connect people. 
So there's a thing of, it's Friday, and on Friday it was a day that was, you were actively encouraged to share all of the Dilbert cartoons and YouTube videos and jokes, etc. Uh, and, it, and it was a great way of bringing the team together because different people submitted things every week. Now it's possible on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays, they all had fun without me, but on Friday I was involved uh, and it was good fun. Now, a story about the value of fun in turning things around. I was working on a project which was really, really, this was my project. This project was really going badly wrong. Yeah. And I was desperate for uh, sorting this out. But it's the point in time where everybody hated everybody else. Everybody accused everybody else. No progress was being made. Money was being spent. Time was wasted. So I took my team off to a local hotel. We booked a meeting room. I organized a, uh, an external facilitator to come in in the morning and she was very good and she kind of re-energized the group and we brainstormed and we blue sky thought and all that kind of stuff. But I realized that when she left at the end of the uh, morning and we had lunch, we, we hadn't solved the fundamental problem and everybody still hated everybody else. And I had no idea what I was going to do when I walked into that room in the afternoon. And so in a moment of desperation or inspiration, it's up to you, when we did go back in the room in the afternoon, I stopped in front of all 10 people and I said, I am going to solve every single problem on this project right now. And 10 people looked at me and I walked out, I closed the door and in a loud voice from my manager firing me, I gave it a minute or two, I opened the door, walked back in again. Most people got the joke. A couple of people looked disappointed. I was still employed, if I'm honest, but most people got the joke. And honestly, at that point, this was the lowest point of the project. We did break the ice and we slowly brought this project back up. And, and I'm not going to kid you, it's, you know, it, we, we delivered late, over budget and under scope, but we delivered something. And I definitely saw that moment of fun as a point of breaking the tension in the team yeah. and turning things around. Absolutely. Definitely. Power of fun. <clears throat> right now, there's a lot of fun going on. And we're having fun today, I hope. Um, this is, I love this shot from Lego. Now I'm assuming people that work for Lego don't dress like this normally, um, but this is obviously Lego having a, a fun interactive session that is bringing about a, a degree of humor. Now I'm, I'm sure you're not gonna have your next steering meeting looking like this, I'd imagine. You're not gonna have your next client meeting looking like this, but when you're having your internal team meetings in a virtual way, make them interesting, make them interactive, make them fun. Absolutely. Um, my partner, Juliet, I mean, she's, um, she works, she's the uh, support administrator for the, the leadership team of a, a billion dollar uh, software organization. And obviously their business has continued like many other businesses. And what she recognized was the work meetings were still happening. You know, they were using all of the technology that's available. Teams were talking to teams, projects were talking to projects, customers were talking to clients, uh, to, to internal suppliers, etc. But then she realized the one thing that was missing was the casual social interaction. The stuff that went on by the coffee machine, by the water cooler, over lunch, down the pub after work. And so she initiated uh, a coffee meet, a morning, a, re a weekly coffee morning, which was just about that. Come on in, we'll all have a cup of coffee, a cup of tea. It's not about work. Actually, quite often they talk about work, but it is exactly that. It's connecting people, the stuff that's missing in this current virtual remote world that we're in. Um, and I think that's one of the important things for projects is to re-emphasize that project spirit, that team bonding, team building, team connected activity. So think about that. So yeah, I mean, after this uh, session, this webinar, et cetera, you will be sent the free ebook. Um, and I'd, I'd ask three things of, of everybody uh, on here. So. The book itself is really interesting because it's not a book I really wrote, it's a book I compiled because I reached out to people um, and I got people to contribute uh, sort of mini case studies. Um, there's some stories and case studies from some very well-known people around, project management people around the world. There are um, some uh, two case stu studies from two PMOs who have used various techniques to bring fun into their project team as their PMO. There are jokes and humorous stories and experiences from many project managers around the world. And I think that's a great point is, you know, when we, when we think about humor, we've got to think about culture. We have got to imagine 
that this 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 joke, this cartoon, this video is going to be viewed by people of different gender, people of different languages, people of different cultures. And the best tip I can give you is, is always think appropriate. If you are concerned, if, if you have any second thoughts, don't, don't use it. You know, validate it if you can through someone locally who's got, you know, of that culture or of that language to make sure it translates properly. Validate it with your team members beforehand, but, uh, you know, try not to get into a situation where humour backfires. Now, you know, I'm British, and I know we Inc. Brits have a certain sense of humour. Um, the Americans don't always get it, which is great fun sometimes, because we can tease them without them realising. But, you know, in this situation, just think it through. So my three asks of you are, very simply, uh, I, I hope you enjoy the book. Enjoy the book, steal the contents, share the jokes, I don't mind, do it. If you do enjoy the book, share the book. And I don't care if you share it with one person or a thousand people. It's about spreading smiles as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's about freely distributing this as far and wide as possible. So we can bring some pleasure, some inspiration, some enjoyment to project managers or anybody that's involved in projects around the world. So please do feel free to share it. It's a PDF format, which obviously is universally accessible. Um, and uh, but, yeah, make sure you're happy with the book first and then share it out there. And then thirdly, and finally, yeah, connect to me on LinkedIn, uh, please. Um, I have a huge community on LinkedIn. Um, send me an invitation, I will accept. And let's keep these conversations going and let's keep this, uh, this community of project managers growing throughout the world. And finally, uh, before we, uh, we go back to some, uh, another poll, I think, some more questions. These are my details again, um, lazyprojectmanager.com is my home website. Um, the pmtribe.com is an interesting one. Uh, as as uh, you said, uh, Colin D. Ellis, yeah, it's, it's so important, he has to have a middle and issue, it's great. I think I should be called Peter B. Taylor. I think I, I feel <laughs> as important as Colin. Now, I mean, Colin is a great speaker. I've seen Colin speak and I know you had a great time. And he's a fabulous dancer, I now know. I have a call with Colin later this evening and I definitely will be trying to embarrass him over his dancing in Mauritius. Um, but the PM Tribe has, has started recently, and it's, it's kind of an uh, oppor yeah, opportune time because it's, a, it's designed as a completely virtual world, uh, community. It's not about training, certification, bodies of knowledge. This is not a PMI com competitor at all. No, what it is, is it's, it's six people. It's myself and Colin. It's Elena Hill. It's um, uh, John Stenbeck. It's Rick Morris. It's Elizabeth Harron. Uh, and we are the faculty leads and what we do is we we run themed groups and every week we set up a call for an hour you're free to join any group you want bring any problem you've got it's like a group coaching exercise with a bit of kind of mini mini lectures involved in it um and it's a community that's kind of growing and, and we'd love uh, for people to join us so yeah the pmtribe.com is where you go to hashtag the pm tribe and finally that that smiley happy face you can see on there is a lady called susie palmer true she and I met in Athens a couple of years ago. <clears throat> she, uh, she has a wonderful sense of humour. And, and she, was, um, she said, well, eventually, it's a long story, but we got to a point of, we have very similar mindsets. She, and, and, and the lady project manager is 10 years old, and, and I, I felt there was a need to challenge again the world of project management. And Susie and I came up with this book, Project Management, It's All Bollocks. It's a challenge on project management. It's not dissing project management. I, you know, I'm a project manager at heart. Project management is valuable. But we just found, both of us, that there are many people out there who are not necessarily full-time project managers, but they are delivering change, delivering small projects as part of their day-to-day -day life. And you know, all this body of knowledge, certification stuff is, is something they can aspire to, but right now they need some help. And so in this book, uh, which I warn you is full of lots of swear words and, and you know, general grumpiness from us as we talk about things we hate, but it also talks about the seven things we love. It talks about the seven things we think everybody in project management should remember. You know, failure is, is an option. Yeah, learning fast, repeating, you know, failing fast, all of that, that kind of thing uh, is in there. And so I'm very proud of the book and I love the fact it's a bright pink cover and it's really quite shocking. And Susie and people like her, are they are the future of project management. Wow. Um, uh, and if you want a good speaker for a future one of these, then I'd definitely introduce you to Susie because awesome. she is magnificent. Wow. And that's it now. My voice is beginning to run out and uh, I'm going to take a sip of water. 
And you're going to hand it back, yeah. back to you. Yeah, thank um, you. Take, take uh, yeah, we, yeah, we're going to have a nice uh, you know, Q&A session, everybody. So uh, your questions are coming in. Uh, let me just stop sharing and then uh, I will just uh, uh, open my slides. Um, so I think you can all see my slide now. And then um, we uh, will have a breather quickly. Uh, so uh, Peter, maybe you can have a breather and then we'll answer yeah. your question because I want to share that with you because I know you've been talking a lot. So um, I want to share this with you. We've got about 25 minutes to go. So everybody, don't worry. We'll answer all your questions. Um, and uh, I want to share this with you. So make sure you have your headset on uh, because the sound is not that great. Um, but I'm sure if you've got your sound okay, you should be fine. So I want to share that with you, Peter. This is the Big Bang Theory. And um, I want to just share that with you for, for you to get a breather and then we'll get back to some Q&A. So everybody enjoy this. Let me make sure we've got the sound ready as well. Okay, here we go. Okay. So just bear with us. Uh, right. Can you see my screen okay, Peter? I can, yes. I'll cut to the chase. The Air Force believes there's an application for this technology and we're interested in funding your research. Well, thanks. But you should know we're a little concerned about this being used in weapons. Well, let me put your mind at ease. What we use it for is none of your business. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about this. Look, guys, it's just a guidance system. It's not like you're handing us the Death Star from Star Trek. <laughs> All you need to worry about is right now it's this big and we need it to be that's a lot less big. <laughs> yes, it's this much less big. <laughs> I'm not even sure that's possible. Well, I ran it by some colleagues at MIT, and they thought they could get it done in four months. Four months? <laughs> yeah, we'll do it in two. <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Sheldon Cooper. I'm the actual brains behind this project. And also, engineers aren't real scientists. MIT is a trade school, and the Death Star is from Star Wars, not Star Trek. <laughs> Thank you for your service. It's pretty late. I think I've got time to run some more simulations on the cooling system. Sure. I'm still figuring out the thermoacoustic expander. All right, while you do that, I am going to pump cerebral spinal fluid through my brain cells to remove the metabolic byproducts of the day's thoughts. <laughs> well, it's called sleep, and it's my bedtime. I night, y'all. <laughs> hey, 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 you're not going anywhere. We only have two months to deliver this to the Air Force because of you. I know, I was there. <laughs> well, wake up! We're gonna put in a lot of late nights. Uh, I don't really know how to say this. We can try starting with Sir. Right, sorry, Sir. He said start with it, not end with it. <laughs> sir, we've hit a bit of a snag. We're already behind schedule. The computations required to overcome the deployability issues are more significant than we thought. I understand that we're under contract, and I don't know what the consequences of violating that are, but uh, we're not going to be able to deliver in the time we promised. <sighs> How long do you need? <clears throat> we're thinking two years. <laughs> That's it? You're okay with that? Well, you think you're the first government contractor who isn't going to deliver on time? We're waiting for a big space laser rig in order to beat the commies. <laughs> Thanks for understanding, sir. Yes, thank you so much. We, we really appreciate it. All right, pressure's off. Want to see a movie? Popcorn's on me. <laughs> So Peter, can you, did you see that video? It didn't come up now in the end. Yeah, but you saw. Well, uh, I have seen, but I have seen the episode. Okay, so uh, I think there was some issue with the video. No problem. Let's just go on the Q and A, guys. Uh, okay. Let me just uh, go on the Q and A quickly. Uh, and um, <coughs> there was some issue with the video, so apologies. I think some of you can see and some of you can't see. Um, so I want to take first question, uh, Peter, if you can have your video on please as well, that'd be great. Doing that. There you go. 
Yeah. So the first question is coming from where did you get the inspiration? Where did you, where was your uh, inspiration fueled up to produce a book called Smart Project Manager? When was that aha moment? <laughs> I'm not sure there was an aha moment. It was just a realization that it wasn't something that was talked about. You know, this kind of uh, humorous part of things, you know, <clears throat> you know it, it's what I do. You know, it's, you know, if you, for anybody who's ever seen me do a, a, a keynote presentation, it's 80% entertainment and 20% information. I was kind of taught that. That's the spirit of what I do in, 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 in the work I do. You know, um, it's, it's a fact, I think, that it was just there. And so there, there was always a realization it was, it seemed to be missing. So when I started looking for, you know, project management humor, that's when I came across those terrible jokes. Like, well, really? This is what represents us as a community? This is gonna be, there gotta be better stories out there. And so, you know, I think the power is, as I demonstrated with the, uh, the 21 day project, the project list manager book, if you reach out to people globally, they will contribute. And I, I got fantastic stories. Some of which I couldn't include in the book, but you know, most of them were, were okay. Um, so yeah, it was just a realization that, that, that life is different to what it seems to be recorded. So yeah, I can't say there was a single moment, it just came about. Okay, awesome. Uh, I've got a question from um, Michael from South Africa. Uh, Michael was, uh, is saying to you, would you agree that there's always more to be learned from difficult project than easy project and that they develop people more through that deaf experience, Mike, from South Africa? Um, yes, well, you learn more, absolutely. And I'll give you two examples of that. One is, you know, I worked for a company and we had, um, <clears throat> it was a university graduate sort of a hothouse development uh, community uh, that we would bring them in and we got them to, some of them to, uh, who showed aptitude, to, to run remote projects, simple deployments of a single module of technology that was very repeatable. And what we saw was, they had no problem doing this until something went wrong and then they were completely out of they had they had no experience to deal with the things that went didn't go according to the script secondly from my own point of view and so a lot of it is in the lazy project manager you know i i i did a couple of projects and eventually i was given uh, what was the biggest project my company had ever had by a factor of four it was a huge opportunity <clears throat> now this project ran for just just uh, near two years it had every uh, positive aspect to it and every negative. In fact, at one point, we, you know, I was preparing to go to the High Court in England as part of my project team to defend our side of the project. We were working with Data General, the company who provided the hardware at that point. We got out the litigation, so I learned a lot through that process. We got the project back on track, we delivered, it had difficult stakeholders, it had everything. Um, and I have to say that it was a, a phenomenal learning experience for me. And, and I wouldn't be able to write the lazy project manager or be who I am without it. At yeah. the time, it was incredibly stressful. And I was, I was physically ill more than once during that. And that's another way of why I learned to not take myself so seriously, to learn to not be at the heart and center of everything, to create that stress for myself, to believe, to trust in the project. These are all the lessons that came from that experience. Uh, absolutely. Uh, we've got Ivan from Rwanda. Um, if you feel that the PM is underperforming in his role, how do you approach him without him thinking otherwise? What step would you advise? So if someone is uh, underperforming, how do you approach him without him realizing? What step would you advise? A few, few, mm. few key nuggets. <clears throat> well, a couple of ideas. I mean, it's a difficult one because it's a, you know, it's a ranking situation. It depends on the culture of your company. <clears throat> but um, uh, I think, you know, there's a couple of things to do. I think one is, you know, collective, collective power is stronger than singular power. So, you know, if, if this is a feeling that your entire project team have, or a significant number of them, collectively providing feedback to a project manager is, is a, a safer way of doing it than, you know, me sitting in front of you and I'm going, Neil, you know, you're crap, man. I mean, <laughs> what, what's going on? I am. You know, even if I do it nicely, even if I give you the feedback sandwich, I, you know, I am technically junior to you because I'm a, I'm a resource on your project. But if the, the team are saying something, I mean, the other, <clears throat> the other avenue to it is through, through the sponsor. Uh, if you have a relationship to go to the sponsor and go, look, I have some concerns here. I just want to, I'm just raising a flag. I'd like you to keep an eye out for this. And I'm, I, I'm still committed to the project, etc. Um, you know, a couple of ideas. It's, it's not an easy one though. 
Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, question from uh, S Singh from India. Uh, I can guarantee he's not my brother. Uh, he's saying is that what if when there's no taker on humor? So what if someone doesn't take it seriously? Uh, what? Sorry. What if someone take it seriously? Uh, what? How do you react? How do you put that balance if someone doesn't take your joke? Uh, you know, um, positively. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I mean, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, I mean, you've got to be prepared for it if it doesn't go well. I mean, the more you do validate and the safer you are on humour, the less likely this is going to happen. But if it does happen, you have to recover. It's interesting. So, one of the things I've been doing recently is I have been doing stand-up comedy training, which is an incredibly challenging experience because what they're teaching you is to deal with these situations. Is yeah. When, I, when your jokes don't work, how do you deal with an audience? How do you deal with hectoring? How do you? So this is very powerful. I think project managers should go through this because it's a real, a real tough. I've never been so exposed in my life because I'm in a room with another person. Well, I was in a room with one person, no furniture, nothing. It's just a studio space, and I've got to try and make him smile. And it's like wow, scariest thing I've done. But I think you've got to be prepared that if it doesn't work, I believe that people accept humanity in these situations and if you upset someone you go really sorry that wasn't my intent i, I totally apologize yeah. not going to happen again can i just understand what it was that offended you or upset you or why you didn't like it right that's thank you for that as feedback to me i will i you know i will be a bit better person than that Absolutely. moving forward there's question yeah. common question coming up from young project managers and young engineers so there's a question <laughs> from uh, mokshita what would you advise to a young professional who's not starting, who's starting to discover the world now of project management? So there's lots of, um, you know, project manager engineers whose first background is not engineering, but they, you know, get, uh, move on to become a, a masters in project management. What advice would you give them to really like, with that smile and the humorous project manager? Well, I think Jim, my general advice, I, mean, <clears throat> I did a blog article called Green Beans, and uh, it's about that really. It's, it's, you know, What's that if article? Can, what's that article, Peter? What's the green beans? Green beans for for the box, yeah, green yeah. Beans. Newbie, newbies into project management. Yeah. Um, yeah. What I said there is that you know, if you if it's all possible, you find your first job in a safe haven, an environment where that nurtures project managers, where there is a PMO to 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 lean onto, where there is a good community of project managers, where they might give you a mentor or a buddy or something. You know, I came from the accidental project management world. I was thrown in at the deep end. Somehow I, I swam. I was lucky. Others didn't. But I think these days, you know, th think about what it is you're doing. And, and if, you can, if you can identify that, that this is an organization that nurtures project managers, doesn't burn them. Um, you know, you're not going to be sent onto a client site within 48 hours of turning up, that kind of thing. Then you're in a safe, safe haven. <clears throat> and then again, I think it's far more about, as a young project manager, being willing, being up for it, being positive, having a smile on your face. Says, yeah, I can help you. I can do that. I can do that. Before you start to impart your own humor on other people, I would say. Yeah, absolutely impactful. We've got Madiha from China. And he's saying, awesome presentation so far, Peter. But the problem is some of us have intrinsic people skill while others don't. So we have some introvert people and some extrovert people. Do you think project managers need to undergo training in emotional <laughs> intelligence to enhance their performance? I'm a strong supporter of emotional intelligence, yes. I know Colin talks about that a lot. <clears throat> That's his top su subject. Um, I also point out I've never been to China, I'm just putting that out there. Um, <clears throat> it's interesting. So if, if I think this is interesting of many entertainers to a degree. If you profile me, I'm actually an introvert. Wow. Yeah. And, and it's, you know, <clears throat> put me in a network, networking situation. I'm quite hesitant. I'm, quite, I, I'm not okay. comfortable. Put wow. me on a stage in front of a thousand people. No problem. I have wow. no issue. <clears throat> so I think you can, you can overcome. Um, one of the best speakers I've seen is a guy called uh, Dr. James T. Brown, who will freely admit, and I, I, I booked him to come and speak at a PM summit that I was organizing. <clears throat> He is one of the most nervous people you'll see beforehand. Wow. Total control situation for him. Afterwards, all he wants to do is, is go. He doesn't want that interaction afterwards. On stage, he is on fire. 
Wow. So I think, you know, there are introverts and extroverts, absolutely. But at the end of the day, it comes back to what we talked about. You know, if you don't feel comfortable in leading the fun, in being the, the, you know, the one that does that, find someone on your team. So there's going to be someone out there who's perhaps better at it than you. Yeah. Support them, guide them, mentor them, encourage them. Yeah. All that so, kind of stuff. So Peter, just quick one. What, what is your message today? Because I'm sure there's lots of introvert people, you know, listening to you right now. How do you, what do you do? What's next? What's next for them? Because they want to be like you. They want to be like, you know, they want to motivate the team. They want to make jokes. How do they, how do they get that? I mean, what's your, what's your plan? It is, it is practice over a long period of time. You know, the journey I went on to, you know, I, I, I started, you know, I was a project manager. Um, you know, you're doing all the communication, you're doing project management, which is quite high. And then I started getting involved in uh, big presentations for my companies. <clears throat> I was involved in big training activities ever increasing numbers of attendees <clears throat> and then I decided I want to do uh, speaking I uh, <clears throat> watched a lot of people speaking I watched a lot of people presenting learn from them I got a couple of good mentors to help me give me some advice and then I started off I was doing very you know the very small you know in the UK there, there is one PMI chapter but they have lots of local branches so you could go along and you could speak at a local PMI event and there might be 50 people there. And, and I kind of honed my skills in that area. Yeah. And I'm, I'm one of the other things I do these days is I do uh, presentational training, speaking skills. Yeah. It's all about doing that. And, and yeah. one of my favorite experiences was a lady came to one of my courses um, when I ran them physically. I, I can do, you know, again, you can do it remotely these days. But yeah. um, and, and when we introduced ourselves, she didn't even want to stand up and introduce herself. Wow. She, and, we, and I gave it a, I, you know, I said, it's fine, sit where you are and just, you know, just say who you are. I mean, other people instantly, they hi, my name is Peter Taylor, and I've done personally <laughs> presentations around the world, and I'm, I'm an awesome project manager. People did that, uh, and you wonder why they were on a presentations course, perhaps, maybe to kind of <laughs> cut stuff down. But this lady was very quiet. At the end of it, at the end of the one day, she stood up at the front and she delivered a four-minute presentation. Now, it wasn't fantastic, it wasn't brilliant, it wasn't flowing, there was lots of hesitation. But for her, that was just an amazing step forward. Wow. Um, and I, I offered her some coaching afterwards. So gradual step, I you know, going back to your question really, I think you know, it is gradual steps. You know, nobody goes from not speaking to standing on a stage in front of exactly. 7, people. Exactly, yeah, absolutely. It's like anything in life, you, you hone your craft, you learn your skills, you make mistakes. I've had bad presentations. I've had good presentations. Okay, awesome. Uh, we've got a question from Zaire. I totally understand the importance of being a fun PM to enhance the spirit of the project team. But sometimes the PM himself is down if the team has been underperforming. How do you motivate yourself when you have a down PM? Uh, so if you're a PM and you're, you're kind of down and the life's not no, going if, well. If, you're, if your PM is down and you well, need... PM to, is down. Yeah, your PM is down, but you need... Yourself. Yes, yes, yes. No, I mean, you don't need... I mean, let's face it, I, I've talked about project managers and you know, leadership from that point of view, but you, the team are self-capable. The teams these days are collaborative. Teams are self-reinforcing and self-competent. I mean, that's all part of the kind of social project world that we exist in these days i mean you don't need your project manager you i mean for sure if you want to put on a team event etc you're going to need the permission of the project manager but as far as that kind of level of fun and engagement with other people you can do it <clears throat> and it goes back to what i said was the fact that if you can do that and you've got people around you they will lift you at times when you're struggling they, they should recognize it you know we keep going back to projects are about people and people need to look after the people and help them out because you know, who knows? Tomorrow it might be it might be me that's down. It might be you that's down. Okay. Um, how many years have you been practicing as a project manager, and where do you get the fire of making <laughs> making people smile all over the world? Where do you get that kick? Uh, okay. So the first question is way too long. Um, it's 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 interesting because you have to look. For me, I have to look back. And go. When did I become a project manager? I mean, I recognised the first project I delivered. So, and um, Peter, well, this question is from Henry from Nigeria as well. Okay, I am. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, so I, I look back and it's probably you know, 40 years ago when I had my first project. It was not called a project. Nobody, nobody referred to me as a project manager, but I could see it as my first project. Very simple. Five years after that, someone called me a project manager as a title. 
mainly because I was I joined a consultancy and they could charge more for me. And eight years after my first project, I was sent on my first training course to become a project manager, which was really great because I suddenly realized all the things I hadn't been doing correctly. So I've been a project manager for a long time. I mean, the last 15 years, I have, uh, as I said, done presentations, training, and set up PMOs. But there's always projects to be done in all of that. I mean, every big travel event I do is effectively a project from my point of view. Um, and, and where do I get my, I think well, the second part was my, my energy, my motivation. Yeah, where do you get that from? I mean, I mean, where do you get that energy to keep going after so many years, you still want people to smile? I still, well, I still, I still think project management is one of the most exciting things to be in. And uh, another one of my famous blogs out there is sexy project management. and Why people don't think project management is a sexy profession. Yeah. Um, uh, which is again a hugely popular one. I am just passionate about project management. <clears throat> and I love all, I love many things that have gone on in project management. Like anything, it gets a bit um, difficult sometimes and challenges, and the profession's grown and not you know. And I don't think everybody contributes necessarily. They they stake a claim. But when I get to talk to project managers, individuals at conferences, at events, stuff like this, I'm always excited about the things that project managers are, are achieving. You know, way beyond stuff that I've ever achieved as a project manager. Yeah. Um, and generally, you know, you're, you, you're, when you do stuff like this, it's your audience that's, that's giving you the, the energy and the, and the excitement. Yeah. Uh, question from an architect, uh, because, you know, uh, construction architect and the project managers, uh, we do have the friction sometime. And question mm -hmm. from Pat, uh, architect from Mauritius, what to do when the project manager not only smile less, humor less, <laughs> uh, but sometimes hostile and very a big bully right how do you deal with that yeah that's not good i mean it's um you know i've come across people like that uh, it's, it's not pleasant it's not sustainable i'm not sure why they feel they they need to be like that um it's a it's again it's a lot of these questions are quite difficult in in something giving very generic advice in these situations you kind of need a lot more background but again it's like all these things i think if you can find a way of not going around the project manager, but dealing aside the project manager to try and get across the view, or you know, giving them direct feedback. You're like, you know, look, I need to talk to you because this is how you're making me feel, and this doesn't make me, me you know, this doesn't make me productive. It doesn't make me make me want to help you. Um, you know, being honest, sometimes you can break through. Sometimes people just get linked into this this behaviour, but it's, it's a, that is a really tough one to answer without all the detail of the situation. That's right. Uh, there's a question from Sriya. I can see a question from the NGOs as well, NGOs project manager. If you're yeah. managing a project where financial rewards are not directly related or indirectly related, how do you get mm -hmm. the contribution of these people who tend to be away from the project? So how do you get people to get motivated and uh, if it's not financially mm -hmm. rewarding? Yeah, well, it you know, I'm not sure the finance plays a major role anyway. Most projects I've worked on, the individuals are not financially benefiting from what's going on. But it comes down to, I, I talk about a thing called the visibility of purpose. It, and it's really interesting. So, on, you know, certainly on big projects, you know, if you start a project, and I've done a lot you know, in through the PMOs of doing health checks and reviews of projects, it's very simple to go in at the earliest part of a project and talk to in individuals and they will tell yeah. you, this project is about this visibility of purpose is very clear because they've had a project kickoff meeting they've had lots of conversations the project manager has, has reiterated the purpose etc but projects very quickly the project teams grow you're using third party offshore systems integrators um, external consultants other people inside the organization the client team gets involved you can very quickly go and talk to people and they couldn't they cannot tell you what this project's about the visibility of purpose has disappeared and that's one of the big things so imagine that you and i are working on, on a, a project right now you're in mauritius i'm in yeah. our head office in the uk yeah. if i ask you to do something and you don't believe in what we're doing necessarily and your manager lives down the corridor you know yeah um, your wife, you know, who are you going to who are you going to respond to first? This person who can come out there and go, great, you get working, oh, yeah. get, get back to work, or me going, hey, Anil, please, hello, I'm on a <laughs> conference call. Why haven't you done this? You have to instill that visibility of purpose in everybody on your team and reinforce it all the way through. And then I believe you'll get that right sort of uh, 
commitment from people. People yeah. always have other priorities, but you know, over and above that, I think you'll get it. Wow, thank you. Peter, I've got a proper PMI question. So in the era of agility, how do we manage <laughs> In the era of agility, how do you manage the sea wave, sea wave change in the sponsor's expectation about the scope versus rigid project manager? So the flexibility of managing change with the sponsor's expectation, how do you manage that with a rigid project manager? Oh, uh, look, you know, I have, I have uh, sponsors, 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 sponsors. I'm, I have a lot of... Um, concern over the state of sponsorship out there full stop, regardless of whether you're talking about traditional or, or agile. I mean, agile is, is, is where it's at now. I have always worked in, well, I've never worked in a true agile. I've worked in a, um, you know, my last company was, we called it Gladjile. It was gated, lean, agile. It was a mix of three. Agile okay. was what. Yeah. Um, but sponsors, I mean, I might, I have a whole presentation around sponsors. You know, it's basically, we're in the, we're in the generation of accidental project sponsors. They, they don't generally know what to do. They don't, have a project management background. I do a lot of work developing project sponsors, coaching project sponsors. Um, and I think it's, it's just a matter of, you know, you've got to get into a certain level of capability before you get into the next level of capability. And if that next level is understanding the nuances of the more agile world, you know, that's a tough call because they haven't even got the basics of understanding what project, projects are about in many cases. It's, this is a huge subject and, and yeah, I, I'll stop there because I, I can rant for an hour, an hour and a half on yeah, project sponsorship. No problem. We've got a few uh, 10 minutes. I know we've kind of, uh, but I uh, just want to get all these questions now from colleagues from Rochers. We have Prabhu okay. from PMI. Prabhu, who is a PM, uh, PMI member. Uh, reflecting on the smile and sense of humor of a project manager, is there a relationship between the latter and critical success factors for a project? So is there a link between, uh, you know, humor, smile versus um, the CSF, critical success factors? I, not, I can't deliver those facts. I couldn't put up a graph and show you the correlation between the two. And nor do I say that, um, you know, you can't be a very serious project manager and deliver a project with minimal fun. But I think that's quite achievable as well. I don't think it's very nice or sustainable. It's not great for your project team. You might find it difficult to get people to join you on your next project if you don't have that spirit. I mean, we go back to the you know the classic Bruce Tuckman thing. You know, the, the forming, storming, norming, performing, and then mourning. You know, when you dis when teams disengage at the end. Yeah. If you have people who leave your project team and are just relieved, then they haven't had a good experience. And that may not have impacted this project, but next time around, they're going to do everything they can not to be on your project. So I'm not sure it's, it's good for the long term. Um, I, I just feel, and I can't put a number on it, I can't put a factor on it, I just feel that a, a project manager who has that positive attitude, that smile at the right time, that, that encourages team, team performance through team engagement and creativity, is going to be more successful in the long run. Yeah. And, and life's going to be more enjoyable for everybody. You mentioned in the presentation that jokes need to be appropriate and relevant. There's a question yep. from Aditi. Uh, a project manager most of the time has to, communicate, has to communicate with a workforce or stakeholders from a diverse cultural background. Humor, not, humor might not always be receptible and in the worst case, taken offensively. Can a project manager avoid this in our global world right now? Um, I think you can avoid it. I think you need to be very cautious. Uh, and my advice has been, if you have any doubts, don't use it. That's, that's the best advice I can give you. Um, but I also think there is, there's some very light humor you can use, even if it's, you know, um, you know, even if it's a simple image that reinforces what you mean, you know, by this, you know, there's, there are very inoffensive cartoons uh, that you can use. Um, it's, I think, you know, there's a, there's a, I mean, a good example of this is, um, and I don't know if anybody's seen this, but there's a, there's a Pixar mini, which is called The Birds. Um, and if you've not seen it, you understand it, but it's all about little birds sitting on a telegraph wire, and a great big bird comes on, and he yeah. bends the entire line down. And so they peck to get rid of him. And when they do, of course, it's like, a, it's like a, an arrow, or, you know, a bow and arrow. They disappear up. The point, you can use stuff like that, which can, is not offensive to anybody, I don't think to reinforce the fact that everybody's welcome in this project team. You know, everybody's important. And if we get rid of someone that we don't really like or doesn't fit in, that could be, ne that could be negative. So that's just, I'm trying one example of what I call soft humor, yeah. as opposed to 
here's a joke. Let me tell you about this one. Project manager walks into the bar. You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. That can yeah. go down badly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, question from, we've got two more questions on the Q&A as we conclude. The question from Yogesh. Uh, how do you, because we know in COVID-19 and project managers are struggling with work, uh, salary cut, um, you know, being laid off. How, what, what would be your advice to all our 270 you know, plus participants right now? I mean, what would the advice be in terms of word of wisdom to really kind of navigate through COVID-19? Um, build and value your network, I think is, a big, is the biggest thing. You know, start giving. Um, you know, if you can imagine, you know, uh, it's not dissimilar to what I'm doing right now. You know, right now, my entire rest of the year disappeared. You know, I had conferences lined up, events lined up, consultancy lined up. It disappeared, you know, within the space of a few weeks. Uh, and I, like a lot of people, are just, you know, giving back. And, and we're giving back because we have the time to give back. We're giving back because we have the experience to give back. But, it, you know, I'll admit it, part of it is also building my network and reinforcing that network for what can come afterwards. And I think the same is true of anybody. You know, you, you know don't isolate yourself in a situation. Start to share and connect with people. See how you can help out with people. I was talking to a project manager the other day who's... Um, you know, you know, volunteered for, uh, you know, working with our, our NHS service, et cetera. And uh, he's not getting paid for it. Feels great about it. And he feels motivated by it. Stuff you can do, I think. Stay active, stay engaged and build your network. Um, we've got a question from the architect saying, the more we go, the more we enjoy the moderator and the guest speaker. Very human. PM management made easy. So they're really enjoying your, um, you know, your, your, your vibe, your positive energy that you're bringing from the UK. So uh, thank you, Peter. I'm just going to move on back to my slide now. And um, uh, everyone is thanking you as well. So uh, my manager has also responded, my boss. So he, he said to me, uh, don't worry, it's all being positive at the moment. So you're not being laid off for now. So thank you uh, to my boss there. Thank you very much indeed for that. Um, in real time, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just going to share my screen before we conclude, Peter. So I'd like you to see that as well. Um, so thank you everybody, we're not finished yet. So we've got a few more minutes to go. And uh, before we thanks Peter formally as well. So Peter, leave your video, no problem. Um, okay. So, um, so we had those questions, Ashvina. I mean, this was in fairness to, to her. She's, uh, we've answered most of the question, uh, but she also said, please take note of my question as follow on how project can be fun. Project always serious. We've talked about that. The stress of meeting deadline result in a hectic environment. You've talked about that. We have many department stakeholders related to project. It creates tension and blame game. Peter, on your book, you mentioned about also try to do, you know, go out on a Friday, have a bit of fun on your book. Yep. I mean, would you mind just share that with the participant? Like, why do we need to get out with the team on a Friday and, and, and have a laugh just like the power rate situation? Well, I think people need that kind of stress. They need that kind of stress relief to start with. How you do it is, in top, is in top, up to you. But, you know, when I was a, a, a very uh, busy uh, project management consultant, um, we quickly realized that, you know, whilst, you know, if you like, it's a commercial world, it's all about utilization, it's about money. They recognized that actually project managers and consultants needed to connect with each other, et cetera. And so even that company, we had every other Friday, you were allowed back in the office for the afternoon, weren't expected to work on client work. It was about connecting with your peers, doing the admin and easy to do and actually getting some answers to some problems. So kind of creating an avenue for this social interaction, this kind of human connection is, is really important. And that was just the way that we kind of did it in that situation. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ashvina, for your question. Nitin from University of Mauritius. I think we've answered most of Nitin's question, uh, but there is something there in terms of public sector. You know, mm -hmm. the challenges of public sector being proactive, you know, we don't want to get into politics here, but uh, what are your advice to really get public sector being much more innovative and creative? Oh, my goodness me. I mean, you know, the most miserable project I ever had was in the public sector, I must admit. <laughs> and it was dull, it was boring, and they, and they didn't get me, they didn't understand me, and I was actually replaced as the project manager. So I'm probably not a good person to ask. Look, I, you know, I, but I've worked in other, I, I think... I know, in the UK, though, I would say things are gradually changing. They, they kind of recognise this. It's, left, it's less 
straight laced, straight faced. It's a little bit more different as far as the attitude is concerned. It, it is still slower. Um, and, and it's best not to fight that, etc. But again, I, you know, the one the one thing I did do was I, I dealt with things outside of work. I, you know, I yeah. invited the, the, the the resources to meet me in the pub after work on a, on a Wednesday or Friday or whatever and just chat about stuff and get to know them as people. It helps a little, but you know, yeah, that was a that was not a, my, my high finest moments. <laughs> yeah, thank you for being so honest with us. So we're gonna go back to the survey. I've got about you know five minutes to conclude. So we're gonna okay. go back to our first question again, and uh, we're gonna relaunch polling. And please, 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 everybody. So can you see my poll there, Peter? Okay. Yeah. So do you think that the project manager should have a sense of humor? Uh, there's about 250 plus of you here today. And uh, please, 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 please vote in. Uh, do you think project managers should have a sense of humor? Uh, 50, 60 percent of you have voted. Please, please, please put your vote in. Uh, just to really, uh, you know, uh, capitalize on what Peter have said. So uh, already um, 67, 68 percent. Do you think project managers should have a sense of humor? And 69 percent of you have voted. And I'm going to end polling and share the result. So Peter, there's a whopping 98 percent. Um, and there was 2%, I think there was 3% before, so we reduced it a bit. But come on, 98% on a Wednesday evening, I think that's an awesome result. So I'm just going to stop sharing. And um, I was just going to try to obviously finish off with some nice good. Here we go. Can we put a big round of applause for Peter there with a pirate of Caribbeans? We love you, Peter. I think this is all. Yes, 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 yes. The project manager. So I think Peter stay as is, as, as is. I think we love you like that. And um, so just to conclude uh, the video, I, think, I don't know what's happened there. Uh, I want to just share something with you, Peter, because I know it's Mental Health Week uh, in the UK, and be good to have your views on that one. So I want to ask the audience. Uh, we got you know ten minutes left. Uh, about how many of you are aware of um, mental health? And of course, Peter, I'm sure you're right on top of that as well. How many of you are aware of mental health, you know, generally, or you've heard of it, and mental health at your workplace as well? Uh, I'm a big advocate of mental health in construction. And, um, you know, and I'd be, it'd be good to have your views as well on that, Peter, after um, I share that slide. But, you know, 60% of you have voted. How many of you are aware of mental health? It's something close to my chest. I've been through it myself, and I want to share that and kind of really spread the awareness. So 67% of you have voted, 68%, and I'm gonna share the result. So I've been doing this webinar now and a lot of people are aware of it. 86% says they are aware of mental health and 14% is still aren't aware. So um, something uh, I'm gonna share with you now, and um, let me just share that with you. So here we go. So definition of mental health, mental health is defined as a state of well-being in which every individual realizes his or her own potential, can cope with the normal stresses of life, can work productively and fruitfully, and is able to make a contribution to her and all his communities. That's coming from who? Um, so this is the, the week today, this week is in the UK, the theme is kindness. And what uh, the mental health organization goes on to say, we have chosen kindness because of singular ability, to unlock our shared humanity. Kindness is friend and relationship, develop community, and deepen solidarity. It is a cornerstone of our uh, individual and collective mental health. Wisdom from every culture across history recognize kindness is something that all human beings need to experience and practice to be fully alive. So there was the story there, probably uh, you'll be able to read more to that. But we also like to shine the light on the ways that kindness is already flowering in the COVID-19. We have seen in the dancing eyes of the 100 years old Captain Tom as he walked his garden to raise money for the NHS and in the mutual aid group responding to local need. We want that kindness to spread further in every community in the UK and I would like this to be spread in the world. So this was Captain Tom. He decided to raise a few pounds and before you know it, he's actually raised 17 million pounds in terms of he was 99, now he's 100. And Peter, I've noticed that in the morning, he's been night, um, you know, going to have a night with, yeah, night with, so, 
Yeah, he'll be captain, captain Sir Tom, and he's now raised 32 million. 32 million. So, Peter, just quickly, as a project manager who's got, you know, years and years of wisdom experience, why mental health is so important for all of us listening right now? Um, I think right now, it's a, you know, people are being challenged a great deal. They're very concerned. It's like being in a, in a very stressful situation, full stop. So it's, it's become even more uh, of, a, of a strong theme. And I think, you know, if I talk about you as a project manager, there's a chapter in the Lazy Project Manager, which is, you know, it speaks to this. It's the fact that you as a project manager have a responsibility for your people on your project. And you have a small responsibility for a small part of their career, their working life. Yeah. And again, you need to, you can't build this into the work breakdown structure. You can't build it into the, the schedule or anything like that. But you have to have time to recognize the people you're working with and recognize the ones that might need some, some help. It might be just a, hey, come on, you're doing a great job. You know, you know cheer up. It's, it's you know, one of those days to something more significant and having an awareness around mental health. And, you know, and I've seen and I've experienced personally the, you know, the, the impact of stress as part of uh, this this profession that we're in and if you get it wrong and i got many things wrong i created a lot of that stress myself you know i, I you know i know what it's like to be you know physically ill as a result of that and it can be more serious than that uh, and peter that's why we want to thank you uh, from the bottom of our heart from mauritius from africa from india from everywhere by the world because what you're doing right now is reducing that mental health maybe you're not aware but whatever you're, you're portraying, whatever your books is selling, is right in the heart of mental health. And this is what you've done. So thank you very much indeed, Peter. Uh, I've got a few more slides before we terminate. So this was something I want to share with you, Peter, as well. This was from Bill Hill, CEO of The Lighthouse. And he goes on to say that we need to do toolbox talks whenever we have meetings. And his three golden rules to promote better mental health can be adopted easily. First, always ask twice. You don't always get the true answer first time around. Secondly, seek to understand before you seek to be understood. Seek to understand before you seek to be understood. Listen and don't judge, which is easier said than done. And finally, he goes on to say, finally, always be kind. There's no reason to be unkind. Even if you have to deliver a tough message, it can be done in a human way. So again, Peter, I think this is really poignant message from uh, the CEO of Lighthouse. So uh, I want to just uh, finish off with a few books uh, from Peter. Peter, you've already mentioned that. I think you, what you've done there is going to go for charity, as you mentioned. Uh, all the money, I think we can't thank you enough for that. And what you're saying in the book is to share ideas and thoughts from this current world crisis. COVID-19 demonstrates how project managers have, in many cases, become project-less managers, but have kept on doing what they are meant to do, bring about change and improvement and whatever they engage. It's also a book of inspiration of what is to come in project world when this moment in history passes and what amazing ideas I've learned about themselves in the past few weeks that others might benefit. So Peter, just quick one on this book before we terminate. I know we've got five minutes left. Um, what inspired you to contact all your contacts around the world to give back to the world? Was it the, the COVID as a, as a matter of gener generosity? What was it, Peter? That kind of gain, the mm -hmm. aha moment. Yeah, no, I, I, I saw a couple of things where people put things out saying, hey, I've tried this, it works, there's a tip for you, etc." And I thought, well, it would be great to put all these in one place or, you know, a whole bunch of them in one place. And equally, you know, how can we keep these projectless managers busy in, in the short term with something that they could aim for? And, uh, you know, by having a 20, 20, 21 day project, it was like, well, hey, you know, you've, you've got to deliver, you've got to deliver on time and these are the constraints. And the work really was around shaping the, the, the process and then controlling the submissions. Um, it's interesting how many project managers can't count up to 500 because they submit a 2,000 word <laughs> thing. Most didn't, to be fair. Um, and then just, you know, the editing at the end. But no, it was kind of like it was a project. It was a project for me and it was a project for other people. And it's got something, there's something about a book that is very... Um, it's very solid, it's very real that there is a book that they can reference. And if, you know, going out there now and looking on LinkedIn and seeing all the contributors about what they're saying, hey, the, you know, this is my first publication, this is the first time I've done this, uh, it's great, it's really great. And, and I think he, the content has value to people as well. Peter, when will this big, I uh, know the book is available hard copy, when will that be available Kindle wise so that we can it's download from the Mauritius? It is now available, it became, it became available last night.
All right, so it is in, on Kindle right now, so we can go and buy it. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, the interesting with this project, the one thing, you know, you think you can cover everything. It's a good example of projects, now they can go wrong. The one thing I thought was guaranteed was the Kindle, was the, was the amount Amazon publication at the end. It's never taken more than 24 hours for me to do that. Uh, it's, it took, it's taken uh, over a week and a half to get the Kindle wow. version out there. Wow. And it awesome. will take it will take further time for it to roll across all of the platforms. So I you know I checked it's on .co.uk it's on .com yeah. but it may take other a time for, for it to appear on other Amazon sites. So but it will everybody get there. yeah awesome Peter so everybody who's listening to us you can go right on Amazon right now because I checked it last night as I said to you it wasn't there it was only hard copy but you can go there and download that and all the money is going to go to charity. So thank you for that Peter. This is the book which Peter will email me. And I think I want to share that with you, Peter. Uh, Alexander, I think, again, there was no, I, I, you didn't know that, but I actually put that in and it ties in with your first slides. Alexander yeah. goes on to say, what do you want out of your life? Think about that for a second. If your answer is a steady paycheck, peace and quiet until retirement, then don't bother to read this book. You can just go right ahead and join the army of disillusioned, Cynical zombies slogging through their work life in a permanent state of ennui, through though why anyone would want to. I will never understand. He goes on to say, but hopefully, your answer goes a little something like this. I want to kick butt at work, deliver great and successful project, make a difference. I want to wake up in the morning excited to go to work and have a great time while I'm there. I want to be an inspiration to my coworkers and everyone around me. I want them to be happy that I'm here there. I want to come home from work fulfilled and with energy to enjoy my family, friend, and my uh, life. So if this is you, then this is the book for you. And what's more, I salute you for having the stern to go against the grain and deciding to actually enjoy your life and just have some fun. So Peter, this is a, the quote which I would like to, to get this book out to everybody to read. And finally, I've read this book again, your first edition, the lazy project manager illustrate how anyone can apply the simple technique of lazy project management in their own activities in order to work more effectively and consequently improve work-life balance. This productive laziness approach built on the Pareto principle that state that for many phenomena, 80% of consequences stem from 20% of the causes. To put it simply, only 20% of the thing people do during the work really matters. So I think, again, um, this one, Peter, we've got five minutes to make it seven because I want to make it two hours of PDU or two PDU. Peter, on this quote there, just quickly, because I, I'd like to get it from the horse's mouth, really. Why 20% only matters? Well, you know, there's more to it than, than that, but it really is. You see, you know, I talk about the fact that the science of laziness is applying this principle that you know, we, we have to, we all have to do this. So, you know, if you start on your oldest thing and start working your way through, are you making progress? Now, what I challenge people to do is consider the 20% that delivers the 80% on personal return on investment. Consider the things that are in there that are most important. You know, it's a combination of, of, of importance and impact, if you like. And to focus on those things first, because what can happen after that is if you, if you get the most important thing done, it empowers you, it encourages you, it enthuses you, it, 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 dry, it helps your team move forward. And, and then you kind of recalculate, you recalibrate, what's the next most important thing I should be doing? And once you've done that, you might find things drop off the bottom that you don't need to do. And you might have done things beforehand that you would have, you know, weren't really beneficial at all. So it's a, it's a fact that you focus your activities on that 20%, something, yeah. what's in that 20%. And then which, if you ever get to the point of doing all those, which is highly unlikely, then you move on to other stuff, but uh, there's usually enough in the 20%. I, I love that book, Peter, and everybody listening to us here, uh, more than 200 participants again, please, please, please get this book. You love that as well. And we are connected with Peter now, so you, you can always ask him questions on emails and LinkedIn. So before we finished, I wanted to have fun quote, the PM and the free envelopes, Peter. I have to do that. So a new project manager spent a week at his new office with a project manager he's replacing. So the, beard, the, the, the guy with the beard is, looked like Pete actually. So he'll be taking over the job. Uh, on, the last, oh, and on, on the last day, the departing project manager tell him, I have left three envelopes in the desk drawer. Open an envelope if you encounter a crisis you can't solve when I've left. 
So these are the three envelopes, and it goes in the drawer. So three months down the track, there's a major drama. Everything goes wrong, all the usual stuff, and the project manager feels very threatened by it all. He remembers the parting word of his predecessor and opens the first envelope. The message inside says, blame your predecessor. He does this and get off the hook. Yes, so actually blame the project manager, awesome. Next up is about a half in a year later, the project costs have rocketed combined with other serious issues. The project manager quickly opened the second envelope and the message in the second envelope says, replan ASAP. The project managers replan ASAP and the project quickly rebound. Massive success, love the triangle, success, hurrah. So we've only got one envelope left. So three months later, at his next crisis, worse than the previous one, he opened the third envelope. And guess what happened to all the postmen? The message inside says, prepare free envelopes. So this is the message, uh, and I think I, I, I love that quote, and I hope you love this as well. And I hope you don't need to prepare free envelopes next. So uh, quickly, guys, before we finish, uh, next CPD will be on negotiation and why inclusive design matters. We also have a future collaboration with Peter. Peter said, look, he would like to give back. And obviously, he'll be organizing some online training, paid on this one, of course, uh, in the future, where he'll be talking about the project from hell. It's going to be a one-day hellish workshop online with Peter, the lazy project manager. So we'll send you the flyer, and we'll see how we can collaborate once COVID is over. Uh, to get you going with the project management and, 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 and the project from hell. So take care, be safe, everybody. Um, the world is live now. Um, Mauritius is back on 1st of June. When is um, UK really coming out, Peter, from your side? Gradually, gradually. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think in reality, any, any real normality, probably September. September, wow. So from, uh, from in Mauritius, we are looking to unlock the lockdown uh, as from 1st of June. There's no COVID okay. now, so it's been a great job by everybody in Mauritius. Um, so as Sir Bruce said, everybody in the construction industry, keep a nice two meters. So always there's a sense of humor already in the construction industry where you know, they're loving the sign, but obviously the late Sir Bruce said, you know, make sure there's a nice two meters and I will again apply that to Mauritius and everywhere in, in Africa, keep the two meter nice, yeah? Uh, so, Peter, I want to share something with you. Today is my 80th CPD talk. Um, I started my CPD in 2014. Uh, and, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I can't believe it. I was just making the numbers. 80 CPD talk, and you are the 80th. Um, my 60th was in PMI, um, the PMI where I did the risk project management. So it's been an awesome uh, journey. So I, I would like to thank everybody who's listening. It's been really nice. It's giving back, and uh, I'm really enjoying every minute of it. So, Peter, before we conclude, uh, I'd like to have a nice word of wisdom from you. What is your final say in terms of why do we need to be happy after a two-hour session? So, final word from you, Peter. Um, I just think it's going to make your life a lot better if you smile. I mean, you know, smile, get people smiling back, team spirit. Just, you know, it's, it's a good thing. Smile. Wow. Okay. So uh, everybody, can you put your hands up, please, for Peter? Uh, we've got, again, more than 200 been listening to us today. Please put your hands up for Peter. I mean, Peter, we can't thank you enough. You have, this is your longest webinar. Okay. So I do apologize. And uh, I know you have two hours of your crucial time here. We'd love to see you. I'm sure the PMI team are already sending messages that we want you in Mauritius. So it's, it's going to be ASAP. We can't welcome you here in Mauritius. And I'm sure everywhere, um, colleagues were watching in Africa, in uh, China, in India, uh, every part in the continent, we would love to have you. So everybody, can you put your hands up there? And Peter, maybe a, a, away from where you are. And uh, thank you, everybody. So thank you, everybody. Take care, Peter. You. Once again, massive thank you for all your time. And you'll get us your book, which I will email to everybody. Um, uh, after the event today. So please, everybody, thank you, everybody, and take care. All right, Peter, thank you very much indeed. Bye. Thank yeah. you. Take care, everyone.